Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. This is your host, Thomas Tyree from One of the Hot Podcasts. Today, this will be episode 94 for you guys. Today's episode will be coming on all four of our platforms our Instagram account, our Facebook account, our YouTube account, and our Apple Podcast account. Uh, so let's dive into the first segment. The first segment I will be covering will be in college basketball. Uh, March Madness is underway into the most exciting time of the year when it comes to sports tournaments. So March Madness is underway, and I'll be sharing my thoughts on March Madness so far. So this past weekend, uh, we've seen round 64 and round 32 officially in the books for the 2023 season of March Madness. And it has been a spectacular start to the tournament. Uh, it's been a crazy first two rounds. Uh, we've seen two numbers, uh, two number one seeds officially knocked out of the tournament within the first two rounds. They have been eliminated. There are zero ESPN uh, perfect brackets left in the March Madness tournament. Uh, if you guys do ESPN uh, March Madness brackets, there's nobody in the world today that has a perfect men's bracket out there. At this particular moment, that's how much the March Madness has. It's been electric. It's been satisfying to watch. The madness has been real. Uh, there, uh, there's, and my Elite Eight that I posted for you guys on my account, there's three teams knocked out of my Elite Eight. Uh, there's only five teams that I put in my Elite Eight that is still alive after the first two rounds of March Madness. It's, it's crazy. But let's get into the, the let's get into the madness that we witnessed in the first two rounds. I'm starting off with the first... A uh, huge upset that we saw, thir number 13 seed Furman, they knocked off number 4 seed Virginia, uh, a school with only 500,000 students enrolled at the university. This is a very small school, I believe located in South Carolina. This Furman team took it all the way down to the end and competed with the Virginia team and they won off a three-point shot, which they never should have got. That wild Virginia turnover within the last 15 to 12 seconds really set up Furman's go-ahead game-winning three-point shot. And we've seen one of the biggest upsets in March Madness history. Furman is a school with, again, only 5,000 5, students enrolled in the university. This school went on to beat Virginia and they sent them home packing. Before I move on, I, I I just got to address Virginia at this point. I think the University of Virginia, uh, their basketball program, the men's, uh, certainly should be, should take some time away from March Madness. I mean, it seems like they're always a team to knock off if you're a, a small team trying to make a statement or get a March Madness win. Sometimes the first March Madness win in the program's history. It seems like Virginia is always the team to pick on. They always get upset in the first round. We seen it in 2018 when the unthinkable happened. The first team in, uh, in March Madness history, number 16 seed UMBC knocked them off, became the first ever 16 seed to knock off a of one seed in NBA, I mean, in uh, NCAA history in March Madness. Then in 2021, they lost to Ohio, which was a 13 seed. Uh, uh, 13 seeded Ohio in the first round, and then this year we just watched a 13 seed th Furman team knock them off in the first round. I think Virginia just needs to take a break from March Madness. I don't think they should be invited, no matter if they win the ACC or not next year. This uh, this uh, club, this program, just needs time away from March Madness. Uh, inc incredible. Uh, and then we saw a huge upset when we seen the 15 seed Princeton knock off the number two seed Arizona. Right now, they are the Cinderella sto story in March Madness. Not only did they win the first round knocking off Arizona, they went on to blow the brakes off of uh, seventh seed Minnes uh, Missouri in the second round of March Madness. So Princeton is the Cinderella story. Uh, I, there's a lot of analysts out there that had Arizona winning March Madness. There's a lot of analysts that had uh, Arizona going forward. Like myself, they were a part of my Elite Eight. I did not expect them to get knocked out in the first round. So Princeton is blowing my mind. They're the Cinderella story right now in March Madness right now. They'll be advancing to the Sweet 16 playing in this upcoming week. Um, and then we've seen history as well. Friday night, we've seen Fair Dickinson. Uh, become the second team in March Madness history. A second for the second time in March Madness history, we've seen a, six, a 16 seed knock off a number one seed in Purdue, uh, and this was uh, shocking. Uh, uh, when I broke down when I was making my bracket, I looked at the number one, the four number one seeds. When I looked at Alabama, when I looked at Kansas, when I looked at Houston, and I looked at Purdue, Purdue looked to me like they were the most obvious to get a beat in the first two rounds of March Madness. And my bracket, I at least had them beating Fair Dickerson, 
uh, Dickinson, but they couldn't even do that. I had them losing in the second round to Memphis, and <laughs> Purdue, I think this whole entire program has gone downhill. Uh, this is this was definitely not something you're supposed to have when you have one of the best big men in the country. Uh, it's a it's disappointing to have this happen. And now that Fair Dickinson, they got their they were one and done in the tournament, but now they can join UMBC as the only two programs in March Madness history to say they knocked off a number one seed as a 16 seed. History was definitely made Friday night. And then we're set to have a new March Madness champion this year. Uh, the defending champions, the Kansas City Jayhawks. Uh, they were knocked out in the second round against Ar the eighth seed Arkansas in the second round of the play uh, in March Madness. Uh, I was shocked that they didn't. I had them in my bracket. I had at least them going to the Sweet 16. It's hard for a team to go back to back in March Madness and win March Madness back to back years. It takes a lot of toll on your body. These player, these college kids only get a day rest for these tournament games. Uh, so it's a lot to go back to uh, win back to back in March Madness. The last time we saw it was when my Florida Gators did in the 2006 and 2007. That was the last time that anybody's gone back to back in March Madness in the men's bracket. Uh, so it's hard to do. Uh, but an update on my bracket right now. My bracket currently still stands at 88.2 percent. I have earned 420 total points in my ESPN March Madness bracket. Uh, again, I did lose some teams along the way. Uh, I lost three out of eight of my elite eight teams. Uh, for uh, in the first two weeks, I lost Arizona. I mean, in the first two games, I should say, I lost Arizona. Uh, I lost Memphis as well. I had them going deep, and they lost in the first round of Florida Atlantic. Uh, and I lost uh, Marquette, who lost to Tom Izzo's Michigan State team last night. So I'm down three teams, and, and Marquette was actually a part of my final four. So now I only had three out of my four team, final four teams remaining. Uh, UConn was my sleeper pick to get to the final four. They're still remaining in the fir after the first two rounds. Number one seed, Alabama, still remains as well. And my winner that I picked, Houston, still remains as well. So three of those teams still remain heading into the Sweet 16. Again, my championship is set up that I have Alabama taking on the num uh, uh, number one seed, Alabama taking on the other number one seed, Houston. And the championship game with Houston evidently having the home court advantage because the championship will be taking place in Houston, where I still have Houston winning March Madness and winning it all for the 2023 NCAA Men's Tournament. Uh, they, they, I believe that Houston will be the March Madness winner this year. But that is ha my thoughts on March Madness so far. It's been a great uh, two first rounds, great competitive action, but I still have Houston winning it all in March Madness this year.